Hello everybody. Today I'm partnering up with Unity to help you get started with Unity's kart racing template, which is available in the Learn section of the Unity Hub. I'm also going to show you how you can make it your own by adding custom features like my cool ghost driver that appears at the end of a race. Some of you might remember that I was lucky enough to be part of your first game jam, which is a live stream Unity is holding a few times a year that is aimed to helping people get started with Unity. The next one is going to be in May, so you should definitely mark your calendars for that. I will have links to Unity's channels and to the recording of the game jam I was in in the description box down below. So if you already know how to set up Unity and the carding game and you only came for the ghost script, then there's a timestamp somewhere on the screen for you now. If you don't have Unity installed yet, you should use the link I posted in the description box, which will help you get settled in. If you already have it, you should start by opening the Unity Hub. Now, here we can navigate to Learn, which offers us different templates and tutorials to get started. In our case, we want to work with the carding game, so we click on that. As you can see, I have already downloaded it, so I just need to click on Open Project. If any of you happen to have downloaded the carding game before today, then you should know that there is a brand new version available that is built for Unity 2019.x. To get the most up-to-date version, you need to follow the instructions on Unity's Learn page, which is linked in the description box down below. Once the project opens, you will see a tutorial window pop up, which will guide you through the most fundamental functions of Unity. I am not going to go through the tutorial right now, but I highly suggest you take your time and play around with it. Once you are done with that, you probably want to customize your game to your own liking, and Unity offers many different tutorials on how you can make this template into your own game on their Learn page, which of course is also linked down below. Here you can learn how to edit the track, add new assets like gummy bears and licorice, or do cool particle effects and much, much more. I of course have done all of this and in true Christine fashion I went way overboard with rainbow colors and jiggly gummy bears. And while I love my game already, we are still not at the end of the line, because we can also customize the game even more by adding our own features, like I did with the ghost script I wrote initially for your first game gem. So to get started with this, we first need to create a c -sharp script that we are naming Ghost Manager. Then we need to create a new empty game object in the hierarchy to which we can attach the script we just created by simply dragging it onto the game object inspector. Now we need to open our Ghost Manager in our IDE of choice. In my case, this is Visual Studio Community. The first thing we have to create in here is a public struct that can hold information of the position and the rotation of our ghost card. This also needs a constructor which translates a regular transform into a ghost transform. For the ghost manager, we need to start by setting up a few variables at the top, like the transform of the card, the transform of our ghost card, and then a bool for recording and one for playing, and of course a list of all our recorded ghost transforms, as well as a reference to the latest recorded transform. Next, we need to jump into our update function. Here we need to first check if we are currently recording. If we are, we need to now know if the card has moved. We can check this by comparing the card's position and rotation to the last recorded ones. If it is different, we have to create a new ghost transform and add it to our list. And of course we need to set the last recorded transform to the one we have just recorded. Now that we have recorded our movement, we of course need a way to play it. So we check if playing is true, and if it is, we call a function called play that we are going to write right now. In play, we need to first set our ghost card to active. Then we need to start the coroutine that will go through every recording we created of the player. Then we set playing to false because we only need to call this function once to initiate the playback. In our start ghost coroutine, we are simply looping through all of our recordings, setting the position and the rotation of the ghost card, and then waiting for the next fixed update until we continue. This is everything we need in the Ghost Card Manager for now, so we can return to Unity. 
We first need a ghost player, which we can create by duplicating the card by selecting it in the hierarchy and pressing Shift D on Windows or Command D on Mac. After naming it, I'm dragging the new ghost card into the project view to create a prefab of it. Now I only need to right click and open its prefab. In here, I can strip every game object and every component I won't need by selecting them and then pressing the delete on my keyboard. Finally, you can also give it a different material, so you can differentiate it better from the actual player. So I'm right clicking on my project view and go to create and material. And then I just drag this new material onto the ghost card. Now we only need to drag our card and our ghost card onto the ghost card manager. And then we can do a quick play test. If I drive a little bit and then manually set recording to false and playing to true in the inspector, I can see my little ghost appear and drive all the way up to my card's current position. Now we of course need to implement this into the existing code so that the ghost player automatically appears at the end of the race. Now to hook this up we need to find the track manager script and open it up. At the top we need to add a variable for our ghost manager so we can easily refer to it. Now if we return to the Unity editor, we can simply drag our ghost manager onto the track manager. Back in the track manager script, we now need to scroll down until we find the function that is responsible for the start of the race. In here we want to set our recording bool of the ghost manager to true and playing to false. In the stop race function we need to set our recording to false and the playing to true. With this done, we are now automatically recording our player once the race starts and replaying our movement with the ghost player at the end of the race. Now the only thing we should still figure out is our camera. You could either have the camera follow your player, which is what I did for your first game jam, or what I did this time around, which is to just look over the map from a stationary point of view. To add the code for our camera, we need to open the ghost manager again and add the namespace for Cinemachine at the top. To our variables, we need to add a transform for the new camera position and a reference to the Cinemachine camera. Now all that is left to do is to set the target and the follow of the Cinemachine camera to whatever we want it to be. Like I said before, this could either be the ghost player itself or a random point on your map. And that is it. I really hope you do give this a try and if you do, I'd suggest you upload it to your Unity Connect profiles and share it with me and everyone else in the comments or on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Bye!